Hi, in this video, I would talk about Oracle patches. So what is an Oracle database patch? Oracle Corporation develops Oracle software and the software is composed of thousands of files, object files, archive libraries, shared libraries, etc. Like any software, it is not perfect. It contains bugs which have not been detected during the testing. When a bug is detected, it is given a unique bug number, which is valid worldwide. Oracle fixes the files that are responsible for the bug. The new version of the file is announced as a patch. Again, every patch has a unique patch number. These files can be downloaded from Oracle's support website as support.oracle.com. You have to have a software update license to be able to download patches. As an Oracle administrator, you are supposed to download the patch and apply them on your database using OPatch tool. This, this process is called patching. When you apply a patch, the existing problematic files will be replaced with new versions of the file. Do I have to apply every patch that Oracle announces? The answer is no. It is not a good idea to apply every patch that Oracle announces. Wait until you hit a bug. When you hit a bug, find the patch for that specific bug, if it is available, and then apply it. So does applying patch add new features? No, it does not. When you apply a patch, no new features are added. It only fixes what is broken. That is, only faulty parts are, re are replaced with working ones. Obtaining a patch, like I discussed, we have to go to support.oracle.com. And we will go ahead and actually download a patch and apply it. So, when you log into uh, to support.oracle.com, on the left hand side you will see the patch, patches and updates. Click on that and then hit the search button. Put in the patch number, the, uh, the operating system and then hit search. Below you see the list of patches that are, this patch is available for different database versions, different operating system versions, and uh, go ahead, choose the right database version, choose the right operating system for your environment, and hit the download button. So what does a patch contain? Patch is basically a zip file. It starts with P, then the patch number, Followed by the release number and then the platform number, or sorry, the platform name. So here you have P followed by the patch number, and then this is the version of your database. In in this case, it's 11G release 2 and underscore generic, which means that it is. <laughs> This patch is generic for all platforms, uh, for all Unix platforms. So once you download the patch, unzip it. Once you unzip it, you will see there are two subdirectories. One is the files subdirectory and one is the etc subdirectory. The etc subdirectory basically has metadata information of the patch and the files subdirectory has the actual uh, fixed files in it. Okay. So how to apply a patch? Okay. As you can see, there are several pre-steps, pre-patch steps, um, and we need to go through these before we actually apply a patch. So the first being obviously download the patch from MetaLink. Once you download the patch, it's extremely important. 
go through the readme.txt. Never ever apply a patch without reading the readme.txt. Every patch has special instructions. Every patch is different. You need to make sure that you go through the readme of each and every patch that you are uh, you're going to apply. The readme contains the patch application steps, whether the patch can be applied without a downtime. Yes, from 11G onwards, we can apply patches even without taking down databases. However, it's not all patches can be applied with databases being up. So make sure you read, go through the readme.txt. It also contains the prerequisites of the patch and the post-patch steps. So starting 11G, like I discussed, certain patches can be applied without shutting down databases. Verify from the readme if the patch can be applied without any downtime. Assuming that the patch cannot be applied without a downtime, take necessary approvals from the instance owners and ask the application team to shut down the application. Once the application is down, we need to shut down all the databases and listeners for the Oracle home that has been patched. Okay. Next, we check the inventory, the OPatch LS inventory to verify that there are no issues with the inventory and we can also see what are the patches applied already on this particular home. Next, to apply the patch, we apply the patch using the opatch tool and we basically have to CD to the, the location where you have unzipped the patch and then we apply the patch using the opatch utility. Once the patch has been applied, make sure you verify the patch logs, scroll up the screen and verify that your patch has been applied successfully. <clears throat> Once the patch has been applied successfully and you have verified that, bring up the database and if there are any post-patch steps, do that now. Once the post-patch steps are done, bring up the listener and verify that the database services are registered in the listener. So now we are actually going to go ahead and do the demo. Okay. So now once you have logged into the my support, my oracle support that is support.oracle.com log in to you within, using your credentials and click on the patches and updates. Then we put in the patch number and the operating system, kind of operating system we have. I have over here a Linux x86 machine to verify that I do a uname minus you can see it's a Linux and it says XI686. So had it shown x86-64, it would mean that it's a 64-bit predict system. In this case, it's a 32-bit. So I'm going to choose this and then hit search. Okay, now you can see that this particular patch is available for these database releases. So let me verify what my database releases. I set the environment, SQL plus, and I see that it is 11.201. As you can see, this is the right version that I should be downloading, and I, and I download it. Now there are two ways to download it. You can either download this file directly onto the server using the wget utility or you can actually download it onto your local desktop and then FTP it to the server. Since this is an extremely small file, 
or extremely small patch I'm going to download it onto my desktop then FTP it using using an FTP tool on the server I download the C colon patches have a account line utility opened and I see in the patches okay I see the patch here and then I FTP to the server this is the code I want the patches downloaded let me create something with the state that if I want to okay. see to it. Okay, let Okay, and I unzip it. Like we discussed, we have two directories, files and etc. The etc has the metadata information, and files has all the files that is that it is uh, updating or fixing. So as you can see, there's only one file that it is actually fixing, and this is the name of the file. And now, like I discussed, very important, go through the readme. So, we, uh, the first section is a prerequisite. It says, before you install or deinstall the patch, ensure that you meet the following requirements. In case of of an Oracle rack environment meet these requirements on each of the nodes. Since this one is a non-rack environment, we have to check on only one node. Okay, this is this says that make sure that your database release is 11201. We have already verified that. Oracle recommends using the latest version of Opatch. Yes, we are using the latest version of Opatch. Ensure that you set your Oracle home that's already done because we have set the dot or env and the database name. So the Oracle home, the SID path, and all this all are set. So all these are taken care of. Then ensure your Oracle inventory and in, ensure that you're able to verify your Oracle inventory because patch O patch accesses it to install the patches. We need to run this to uh, verify your inventory is fine. We're going to do that. Ensure you shut down all the services running on from this Oracle home. So yes, this patch cannot be applied without shutting down your databases. So we need to make sure we have necessary approvals to shut down your applications and the databases and then we can apply the patch. For non-rack environments, shut down all the services from the Oracle home. And for rack environments, we have to shut down the database, ASM, listener, etc. Since this is a non-rack, we are not going to go ahead with that. So the installation, it says you need to basically enter the patch.dir unzip it we have already done that go to the, this directory the unzip directory and do the opatch apply okay then it says start the services once the patch is done start the services and here we do have a post installation step which says run this particular file as sysdba okay After you patch the file, reload the packages into your Oracle database. Run the, this particular file as sysdpa. Okay. The installation, we are not going to go through that because we are doing the installation here and not the deinstallation. 
okay box fixed so these are the bugs which are fixed in the patch okay so here we are going to patch this particular oracle home okay so now we need to make sure that we shut down all the databases and listeners from this running from this particular oracle home so how do we find out what are the databases running out of this particular oracle home one easy way is to uh, check the aura tab that is you see and this was the oracle home 1120 slash db home underscore one as you can see apart from the grid home all the other databases share the same home. So basically, there should be no databases running when we uh, when we patch this particular home because all the databases are running from the same Oracle home. So let me see over here. Okay, I have two databases apart from ASM, which is running from the trade infrastructure home. So we need not shut that down test and we need to shut down the database shut immediate okay next we set the environment for the other database which is dev Okay, I like to do the sysref to make sure that the database has come down cleanly. Like you see, there are no shared memory staggering here and there or the semaphores. So everything has come down cleanly. Let me do the same for test. Everything is down. We can also have a look at the S1. It's down. Now, do I need to shut down the listener? So your listener is not running from your this. Your listener is running from your grid home and not the home being patched. So we are fine here. We need not shut this listener down. So now that we are here, now we do an Oracle home. The other screen. Okay, let's clean up. Okay, this is to verify your inventory. Okay, so as you can see here, um, the inventory came, um, this command was successful. This shows the list of applied patches, and now we're going to apply the patch. So I just go say patch apply. Start supplying the patch. A small patch, and patch is applied successfully. It says O oh, patch succeeded. Okay, if you remember the readme. readme.txt it says that we need to post installation we need to run this file prvtbw.plv on that if you see this is the same file that got copied from the um, Patch directory that is this slash uh, patch uh, patch top slash files to 
this particular location right here. Copying files to this one right here. Okay, so we need to run this particular file. Now, if you run ls hyphen l, so yeah, it's not showing today's timestamp because this is probably. Uh, This right here, if it does a cp hyphen p, it would retain the timestamp which the file has had been created. Okay, so let me start up the database. Start up the database. I run this. Okay, we are done. The that's so we have done this in the test database. We need to do the same on the dev data database, which we also shut down. And the rest rest of the databases that you had seen in the Aura tab, I don't use that use those databases anymore so yeah had had those databases been in use we needed to patch them as well I mean do the post patch steps on them as well okay this is done and we are done with our patching